So what we're going to do today um, is a really simple dish, but something really delicious and healthy is snapper cooked in a bag. It's a very classical technique. I mean, it's called... Uh, yeah, en papillot yeah. in French, which just means in paper. So to serve with our steamed uh, snapper in a bag, we're going to do something really amazing and probably the best in the world, chunky chips. First thing we're going to do is we're going to fillet the snapper. Now, a few of you had enormous trouble filleting this fish. Hands up who had trouble. Aaron, up you come. We're going to do it together. And the first thing we're going to do is identify where the skull, if you like, finishes on the head, which is sort of at a 55 degree angle, and going in underneath that pectoral fin there. And you're going to come right the way through. Not too hard, just to score the line, basically. Then you're going to turn it over, and you're going to do exactly the same thing. Find the back of the head. So behind the skull, that's right. So now we've cut the flesh, we're just going to go through that bone, just to remove the head. That's the central spine along there. And you basically draw a line, feeling where the spine goes. The secret with fish is very sharp knife and long, fluid slicing movements, not jaggedy sort of chopping, cutting movements, right? So what you're doing very gently is you're teasing until you find that spine. You finding where you're going? Yeah. Where you're at the tail, just slice to release that tail. And just above the spine, we just need to release, because there's some little bones that come up. And all you're doing is you're just popping through those little bones. Right? Until your fish fillet comes off. Now we need to remove these, these little sort of belly bones, OK? So knife under like that and remove the bone. That's it. When you look at the fish, there's going to be that little line of ribs. So I'm feeling where the bone is. You find the first one and then pull it out. Feel where the next bone is. But see what I'm doing is I'm supporting the flesh of the fish as I'm pulling the bone out. Because as you can see, they're really nasty little things, you know? Imagine swallowing that. <laughs> Andre. <laughs> oh, and the last thing is just to make sure that there's no scales. Is it easy to fill it with the scales on? Look, snappers are a bit different because they've got such strong sort of central bones that they'll poke through the flesh. But if you're doing a salmon, for example, you'd scale the fish while it was whole and then you'd fill it here. Otherwise, you end up with scales everywhere. Look, that's, that's not a bad job, mate. Cheers, Sit back down, you. Mr. Fish Filleter. It's not that hard. It's just you've got to use those very clean sweeps of the knife. So next thing we're going to do is the snapper on papillote. All right, two things. Foil. And put the shiny side in, because it reflects the heat in. And then paper, pretty much the same length as the foil. So we fold that in half. And I'm just going to round the edges off. Touch of olive oil. A little bit of salt. You just add that bit of seasoning. And then the first snapper fillet. And we're going to put a touch of ginger and a little bit of chilli. And then the second fillet over the top. A bit more ginger. And then I'm going to put some really, really fine slices of garlic. So it's packing a big punch. And the olive oil and the soy, just, it's just going to create like a vinaigrette as such inside the bag. So as it steams, it'll cook it very, very gently. So what we do is we fold over. And what we're doing is we're making a fold at 45 degrees. The advantage of cooking it in a bag is the fact that it's steaming it gently, OK? So it's a very gentle, soft method of cookery. It's, but the advantage is that it keeps all the juices and all the flavours in and around that fish. So all we do now is pop that on a tray. I'm just going to throw a bit of heat under that tray just to start off that cooking process. And it'll puff the bag up a wee bit and it's going to go in the oven for about six minutes. What temperature? About 180. All right, so nice and gentle. And then a rest and it should be cooked perfectly. OK, to serve with our snapper, we're going to do something simple. I think it's the most eaten dish in the world, a simple chip. Yeah? It, it does sound simple, but there's, there's a couple of things that you really need to understand about producing the best chip. OK, so I'm just blocking the potatoes first. So that literally means, you know, taking, uh, taking sides off and producing a, a rectangle. So we're just cutting up our, our chips here, our chunky chips. And they all do need to be the same size. So they all cook evenly. OK, so our, our potatoes are in our cold water in a pot. We've got some salt in there. And they go on the heat, on high. And basically, we bring the potatoes up to the boil. 
Rule of thumb, any vegetable that grows in the ground needs to be started in cold water, OK? Not hot water. Anything that grows above the ground that's got chlorophyll in it, particularly like, say, broccoli, beans, snow peas, goes into boiling salted water. OK, so once the potatoes are cooked, they need to go on a tray and into your fridge. So these are our cooked potatoes. It's really important if you can try and keep them in the fridge for, for more than half a day. The reason why is what we want to effectively get is a really dry crust around the potato, OK? And once they hit hot fat, OK, they crisp up. And hence, we get that really sexy, delicious effect in our mouth. Now, next step, it's quite simple. Peanut oil, OK, is, is probably the best oil to cook chips in. Why? It's quite healthy. And, you know, this myth about chips being fatty, they're fatty if they're sitting in the oil at a, a low temperature where they're really soaking up the oil. The key is to keep them crispy and cook them quick, OK? So we sit in the temperature around 130 degrees, OK? That's, that's probably the best temperature for a chip. Is there any questions, guys, while we're cooking these chips? Say you're doing calamari or other things like that that take... Like, calamari takes a minute. Do you change the oil? Or is it 130 at all? Calamari, I'd do in a, in a, you know, canola oil. I, I wouldn't bother doing it in a peanut oil. I just find peanut oils just... It holds its heat really well. The actual temperature of the oil, though, does it change? It should be hotter, around 180, 170, 180. Because remember, you want to quick, cook it quick, boom, in and out. Right, so the, these chips are sort of standing up and telling me they're ready because they're nice and golden and crispy. I can feel they're crispy by just slowly, gently moving my slotted spoon through there. As soon as they come out of the fryer, onto uh, absorbent paper and season them with salt. So, Gary, if you could do the honours and... They look really, really good, George. I'm not sure they're going to make it to the table. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'll get the fish out, George. Yep. Right. So we're going to plate our fish up. So I actually enjoy serving this in the paper bag. So can I do the honours? What, you want to...? <laughs> and, and, and sniff away. It's, I'm just getting a bit of a foothold. Oh, it smells good, doesn't it? That's delicious. So what's happened is that that fish has just cooked and it's released some of the juices from the fish. And I'm just going to put some spring onions and a little bit of coriander, just because we eat with our eyes. It looks, yeah. pretty, looks pretty good. It smells, it smells absolutely lovely. And our chips can go into a little... So there we have it. That's our snapper on papillot, which means, you know, in paper, with these lovely best chips in the world from George. Lovely, crispy, crunchy chips. My top tip in terms of using a fish for on papillot would be buy fresh fish, fill it carefully, no bones, and remember you need that resting time as well. So it's not six minutes in the oven and straight to the guest. It's six minutes in the oven, couple of minutes and then to the table. So my top tips for making the perfect chips are bring your potatoes up to the ball. Once they're cooked, drain them, place them on a tray and dry them out in your fridge. And then cooking them in a peanut oil at a temperature of between sort of 130 and 140 degrees. OK, Andre, let's get up here and see if you can find a bone in that fish. Dig in, mate. <laughs> That's beautiful. OK, Sandra, how you come? Do I make the best chips in the world? You do, George. Oh, you are the best. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. <laughs>